call someone by something that they're full of. So full of, you can just call them that thing itself. You understand? That dude, that guy, that guy's basketball walking around. So, <laughs> I don't know you don't speak like that, but the idea is this guy plays so much basketball, we should just call him basketball, right? So this, you know, this idea of Allah saying, Allah is saying what I'm about to describe. If you can have these qualities, it's like you yourself are goodness walking around. That's how high these qualities are. And so the beginning of it, it seems so simple, right? Allah says about Iman, He said two things first, and then He said three things. I'll show you the first two things. I think everybody here knows what that means. What does that mean? To believing in, believing in Allah and the last day. Now you know, typically, we have believing in Allah, then the Messenger, then the last day. There's a sequence. But what happened over here? Allah mentioned first Allah, then He mentioned the last day after immediately. You know, there's a lot of commentary, Imam Radama, even, you know, Razi wrote about this, and Alusi Rahimahullah wrote about this. Why mention that over here? Why mention Allah in the last day? Because these are the two things that make someone, motivate someone to do good things. The highest reason you should be doing and I should be doing good things is what? Allah. I want to make Allah happy. I want to please Allah. I'm cautious of Allah. I'm aware of Allah. I'm thankful to Allah for everything He's done for me. The least I should do is the few good things He asked me to do. The number one motivation is Allah. But for some people who don't have that higher motivation, what's the minimum motivation you should have? If, you, if you're not going to do good things to please Allah, at least do good things. Why? Because the last day is coming. Watch out. Right? So the highest standard and the lowest standard, or what, what motivates a person, is mentioned in one place. It's very beautiful how Allah does that in the ayah. Also a very interesting order. What does malaika mean? Angels. Then al-kitab. What does that mean? The book. and the nabiyin Very easy. What does that mean? Now think about that. Angels, books, prophets. You know what the sequence is? Well, in the end, we have communication not with the angels, and we don't have direct access to the books. Who did we get access to? Prophets. But where did prophets get their message from? The book. Where did the book come to them from? The angels. So it's the means of delivery. Now that you're motivated to do good things, here's where the instructions will come from. They will come through the angels by means of a book that will be taught to a prophet. And if you want to be good, you better learn the sequence. You better learn authentic knowledge that comes from this line, this chain, valid things to do good. SubhanAllah. And, and all in one place, right? You want to be good? This is what you have to do. Now Allah mentions in the rest of this ayah, and I'll go briefly, some practical steps. This was what's going on on the inside. What motivates us and where we should look, be looking for the definition of good things. That's been covered. Now he talks about some major good things you can do. And you know, in Islam, there are endless good things to do. There are endless good things to do. There are, you can turn leaving your home into a good deed by making the right kind of du'a. You can, you can you know, do a good deed by purchasing permissible food for your family and taking it home. There are endless amounts of good deeds. And there are small ones and big ones, right? What Allah does in this ayah is He takes the major things. You know like in a building there are a lot of walls and there are a lot of bricks, but there are only a few pillars, structural beams. Those are the most important part of the building. Without those things the building can't survive. A few bricks missing here and there is okay. Some chipping wall is fine. Some paint off is okay. But the beams are critical. So these are the beams that Allah has mentioned. What does He mention? First it was of course the foundation, Iman itself. And on top of that a building is being constructed. And He says, Before I even go further. He, this person who wanted to become good in and out, He gave money, He gave wealth, despite, against His love of it. Against His love of wealth. The question arrives here, Allah is already mentioning a reality for all of us. We love wealth. It's not like there's one person who says, I don't like money, I don't, I don't really care for it. No, no, no. We all love it. We all love it. There's something inside of us, it's not something that you can deprogram, it's there, Allah mentioned it. Even for the good person, he has love, he has to fight it though. Right? So it's there. It's not like the kufar love money and we don't have a love for wealth. No, it's there. Allah put it there. And he said, ala hubbihi, against his love of it. You know, despite his love of that wealth, he spent it. Now the question is, why do we love wealth? Because money doesn't come cheap, it doesn't come easy. You have to give up a part of your life to do things that you don't want to do. Like go to school and graduate. Like go to a job eight, nine hours a day. 
like get stuck in tra tra traffic every day. You have to give up a part of your life so you can get that paycheck. That paycheck is not just money, it's a part of your life. You know, your sweat and tears went into it. So letting go of it is not easy. Because, it, you know, we invested a lot into it. So Allah acknowledges that, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, ala hubbi. But even though he has that love for wealth, what does he do? This really good person? Man, look at a long list. But he started with the real qurba, the closest relatives. Our closest relatives deserve our giving. The question is why did Allah mention the closest relatives? And it's, it's, it, you know, the wisdom of it is a lot. I'll mention very briefly. At least for us nowadays, the hardest people to get along with is who? <laughs> Closest relatives. You get into the nastiest fights with your brother, with your cousin, with your uncle. You, you refuse to talk to them for months and months on end. You know, things get ugly between parents. You know, between husband and wife. They're, they're, uh, rel relations, the ones that we have the most dealings with, tend to get ugly fast. It's easy for us to be nice to each other and smile and say, Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah wa How are you? How are things at home? And like keep the smile for an entire five minute conversation after Jum'ah Khutbah with each other. But we cannot carry that five minute conversation with our brother, with our father, with our uncle. It's not possible. Two minutes later, I can't, I can't believe I called you and you clicked, you know. But not only to be good to them, but to th when you think of charity, first think of them. The qurba. Then wal yatama, which is interesting, Allah mentioned the orphan. Now the question is, how do we know who the orphans are? First of all, you will know the orphans in your family, number one. Number two, if we don't know, if we are not healthy members of a community and we don't know each other and we don't go to each other's houses and our families don't know each other's families, if there's a yatim standing next to you making salah for 20 years, you won't know. You have no idea. What is Allah mentioning, telling us between the lines by mentioning yatama? We have to what? We have to know each other. How are you going to give to y until the yatim comes to you and puts a sticker on his head and says, look, I'm an orphan. No, 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 you have to know yourself. You have to know yourself. And this idea of you having to know if somebody's having a problem, you know, Allah calls the person who has no idea that the person next to him has financial problems, He calls him jahid. The jahid thinks he doesn't need anything. You'll recognize them from their faces. We have to be so sensitive to our own members of community, we look at them and say, you look like you're having trouble, Eric, everything okay? SubhanAllah. We even don't even make eye contact with each other. We say salam to each other while we're texting. Hey, I'm not. Going back to that, you know. But I'll, I'll run along the ayah quickly, inshallah, because I'm way over my time. So, the wil qurba, wal yatama, wal masaki, and the needy, those who can't help themselves, wal nasabi, those who are traveling. Instead of them getting a hotel, they should be staying in our homes. We should be competing for hospitality for those who are traveling. Was sa'ilin and those who obviously ask. Was fir riqab and those who are bonded in the neck. In other words, those who are enslaved. Nowadays, there's modern slavery, financial slavery. There's mortgage slavery. There's credit card debt slavery. There's college debt slavery. There's new slavery now. New chains around our neck. Old, old neck. You know, chains used to be around people's necks. Now there are new chains, but we have to recognize them. Was fir riqab. Then at the end of all of this, he says, وَأَقَامَ الصَّلَاةَ وَآتَ الزَّكَاةَ I think all of you know what that means. What does that mean? He established Salat and? And what? Gave Zakat. Do you remember? Allah first said you gave money against your love of it, and you made a long list, and he mentioned Zakat again. What does that tell us? This is separate, that's separate. Don't think you gave Zakat and you're done. No, no, it's a separate category. And you know, when we think of being good, what do we think of number one? This guy is a good Muslim. What's the number one thing we think about? <laughs> salat. This guy comes to Masjid, he's a good guy. Where did Allah mention Salat in the list? Did He mention giving first or Salat first? SubhanAllah. And He made a list. These are the people you should be taking care of, and you should be establishing Salat, and you should be giving Zakah. <laughs> And the people who fulfill their promises, if and when they make them, whenever they make a commitment, they fulfill it. And if they say, I cannot do it, they tell you to your face, they can't do it. You know, they don't get into business agreements. Nowadays, the scariest thing you'll ever hear in business is inshallah. Right? The, stuff, the scariest thing your partner will tell you, when you're making the payment, you say inshallah, soon. That means, get ready for tough times, right? You know? So... But Allah is describing those who attain goodness if and when they make a promise and there's a switch to the ism fa'il form, mufuna, 
from a fi'l to, to an ism, which would, you know, yadullu ala dawam, it's a do a muslim all the time. There is never a moment where they get into a commitment, they don't fulfill it. This is part of being good. And these commitments are not just at the masjid or with brothers, or with the imam, or with the community. These are commitments at work, at business, at college, with your parents. The students here that made a promise to their parents, I'll work, I'll study hard at school, and you're cutting classes. Even if you're making five salawat, you haven't reached goodness because you're cheating what Allah said. If you're, if you're a really religious guy at work and you're like watching Islamic videos all day while your job is to actually, you know, do some work, but you say, no, no, I'm listening to the Qur'an of Qur'an, you know? You think it's religious work. That's not religious. No, you're cheating your employer. Then he says, It's towards the tail end, the toughest part, the climax at the end. Those who have sabr, they persevere, they persevere, they're disciplined, they remain constant in tough times. In the midst of you know difficult climate, climate of war, and even economic difficulty, social difficulty. This is something that is becoming easier and easier for us to relate to nowadays. Wahina al and even in the midst of war, they have sabr. You know what this means? All of those good things they do, they don't become lazy in them when times get tough. That's what's saying at the end. Their iman stays strong, their salat stays strong, their giving stays strong, you know, their commitments, their promises stay strong. All of those things stay in place, even if times are tough. They don't use difficult times as an excuse to change themselves. They don't use it, you know, right now I can't. No, no, no. That's not their attitude. They have sabr. So part of the meaning of sabr is constancy. You know, which is why at the end of Ali Imran, Allah says, "Isbiru wa sabiru wa rabitu. Rabitu. Be, be, You know, have continuity. So at the end of this ayah, Allah Azza wa says, "Ula'ika al-ladina sadaku." I'll, I'll, I'll conclude with this: "Wa'ulaika hum al-muttaqun." Right? "Ula'ika al-ladina sadaku." Those are the people who confirm the truth. You know, those are the true, uh, true people. They're, they're truthful. Truthful about what? Anybody can claim that they're Muslim. Anybody can claim that they're trying to be good or they're good, or they think they're all right. These are the people who have, you know, proved the truth, not by their words, but by what? Is, are these list of things speech or character? Actions. So all actions. These actions have made these people truthful. Their tongue can say anything they want. Their tongue can be, say impressive things. But these people are truthful by actually having attained goodness. And these are the people that are truly, they've attained taqwa, meaning they've, they've protected themselves. The last bit of, you know, gem. And my favorite gem from this ayah that I wanted to hold back till the end, I'll share with you. It'll take me less than three minutes and I'm done, I promise. Inshallah. Here's what I wanted to share with you. The word bir in Arabic, which I translated as what? Who remembers? Goodness. Is related to another word in Arabic, which is bar. Bar. Bar in Arabic means land. Land, as opposed to Bahar, right? Bahar is ocean. Like Allah says about Bani Adam, right? We loaded him onto the land and onto the sea. Now, Bir is connected to Bab rhetorically in Arabic. What's the connection between the two? You know, when, a, when someone's out at sea or when someone's standing on solid land, which is a safer place to be? A solid land. And of course, if it's actual land that you're standing on, not some like, you know, caving in roof or at the edge of a cliff. In the, in the Quran, Allah describes people who are not good, who do bad things, He describes them as unstable. Either they're climbing at, up a mountain, yasa'adu fis samai, and when you're climbing up a mountain, what can happen? You can slip and fall. Or He describes the mushrik as someone falling from the sky. وَمَنْ يُشْرِكْ بِاللَّهِ فَكَأَنَّمَا خَرَّ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ or he describes the Surah Al-Nur, the one who had does shaykh, you know, someone in the middle of the ocean, you know, min fawqihi mawjum, min fawqihi sahab, he's in the middle of the ocean, no land. In other words, it's like describing people who are in the middle of instability. But then when Allah describes the, the righteous, it's like they have gotten away, and by the way, even, the one who worships Allah, like the one standing at the edge of a cliff, unstable. But when Allah talks about goodness, it's like you've reached solid ground. Now you're okay. Now you're stable. These, this, these things, they give us stability in life. They give us stability in our character. Look up this ayah yourself, inshallah ta'ala. It's not very long to memorize even and use in salat. This is ayah number 177 of Surah Al-Baqarah. May Allah help us understand His book and live by it and develop a love of it in ourselves and in our families. Barakallahu ni wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ni wa iyyakum bil ayati wa dhikri al-Hakim.
Madame, donnez, 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 donnez,